one thing works and then eight copycats pop up. Another thing works, eight copycats pop up. It's kind of how it goes. But I do feel that I think 90% of people will do what they can get away with and not what they think is good. A human being. Yeah. Which, Maybe in somewhere else that would be appreciated. Over here, the truth is, it's not. It's like this guy, he's so available, means he can't be talented. Yeah. Means he can't be interesting. Can't be a star. Means he can't be a star. But I'd heard a lot about how people don't get cast because they don't have a social media following. Yeah. So I know I forced myself for a while. What's it like being an established actor in 2024? What's it like navigating and bouncing between shows and films, platforms and mediums, theatrical and streaming? To shed light on just that, for the season finale of the Streaming Show podcast, I spoke to Jim Sarb. It feels like the talented actor has been everywhere over the last few years. On streaming, we've seen him on popular shows like Four More Shots, Please, The Beloved, Made in Heaven, and one of my favorites, Rocket Boys, for which he even bagged an international Emmy nomination. He also recently started his own YouTube series, Crew Cut, which I strongly recommend, in which popular actors interview the storytellers and artists behind the scenes about the craft of filmmaking. Jim spoke to me about the ongoing, often soul-crushing conflict between an actor and artist wanting to do good work, as against the constant calculations of playing the positioning and perception game. Along with the current slump and uncertainty within the film industry, flitting between Shakespeare and playing the villain in his first ever Telugu film, and his thoughts on the talent management ecosystem, and a whole lot more. This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service dedicated to elevating great cinema from around the globe. Get a whole month free at mubi.com slash the streaming show. Jim, it is great to have you on the streaming show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It is, uh, especially for our grand season finale, it is not every day you talk to an Emmy-nominated actor. Oh, yeah. um, are you used to hearing that at this point? Does it still No, feel... no, no. Every time when you just said it, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not used to it. I uh, don't mind hearing it, <laughs> but no, not used to it. Very cool label to have. Yeah. Um, I really wanted to have you here to just talk and get an actor's perspective on sort of the streaming landscape and, you know, the film industry at large and what it's like navigating that space in 2024. Um, and, you know, just in terms of streaming, you know, you've obviously done a lot of work on streaming, whether it's Ye Ballet, um, and, you know, which is one of the earliest sort of straight to streaming films on Netflix, mm -hmm. uh, not to mention sort of shows like Four More Shots, Please, The Beloved, Made in Heaven, one of my favorites, Rocket Boys. Um, so just kicking off just as an audience, as an actor, as an artist, what do you make of the kinds of stories and the caliber of stories that we've seen in the sort of Hindi streaming show space ever since it kicked off sort of six, seven years ago? Yeah, there's been a lot of good stuff. A lot of things that I've thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, I mean, I think there was that golden age of streaming that I think you and uh, Sudeep, were Sudeep, also, Dhanma, yeah. Sudeep were also discussing which may or may not be dying yeah. at the moment, but there was a time when it really was exciting. Yeah. When you go to see names, you wouldn't usually see big roles, interesting roles, interesting character arcs. Of course, the usual thing that happens, which is the money flows there. As soon as the money flows there, it comes with it all of the trappings of money, which yeah. is commercial viability, uh, formula, formulaism, safe bets. Yeah. Everything has to be a safe bet. Although I think the market is proving there are no safe bets anymore. Yeah, I think that's fair, yeah. It's, it's not, you know, the usual whatever people relied on, I don't think it's working. Even the crime dramas are no longer cutting it, yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it, one thing works and then eight copycats pop up. Another thing works, eight copycats pop up. It's kind of how it goes. Of course, maybe one day... People will lead from passion and the kind of story that they want to tell. But, and I think people start there and I think somewhere along the process, it gets bastardized. It's yeah. get, you know, it gets deformed. It becomes some mongoloid child that yeah. you didn't plan. But speaking of formulaic, I have to say Rocket Boys for me was one of uh, the most clutter breaking uh, shows and one of the most interesting uses of the long format, you know, to tell the story. Of, of, of these two people, that moment in time, their achievements. It does so much and it was so different. Uh, but again, speaking of formula, I do feel that 
it has inspired what seems to be a bunch of not copycats but you know something has landed when it inspires a bunch of and i just feel like rocket boys you know it feels like there's a lot of people right now working on what i call looking back shows history the birth of nation yeah. um so uh if any of them turn out terrible you can say that you worked on something great that inspired a lot of bad copycats yeah yeah i mean i i get it i get why that is a thing now it's easier to talk about the past if you want to talk about the present sometimes <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. uh so lots of ways to express how you feel currently by setting it sometime either in the future or in the past yeah. like that's a common trick yeah uh through the ages but i do feel that i think 90% of people will do what they can get away with and not what they think is good yeah or what they think works. And I think that's because the system itself is broken. Why would you have ambition in a system where upward mobility is so difficult, yeah. so vilely painful yeah. at times, you know? And But, so people will will make what they say. Yeah. If they say take this out, okay, take it out. If they say at minute 2 something scary has to happen because yeah. it's a horror movie, then put it in. Yeah. By page six. <laughs> I want to make the movie, man. I want to make the movie. <laughs> If these are all your stupid conditions for making the movie, I'll do it. Yeah. Now, are you right? I don't know. We can debate about that later. Yeah. And hope to God that once my story comes out of your machinery, it's still something I'm proud of. Um, but just coming to you and how you, just as an actor, navigate sort of the current world. I'm curious to know when it comes to when you're, you know, you you get an offer. Um, in a world of series versus film is there a different part of your brain working when you're sort of assessing that story apart from obviously the character and the material and how you're responding to it are you assessing them differently when you're looking at a series versus a film no not really not really it's just okay. a script one is longer one is shorter that's yeah. that's really all uh, yeah. like did i like this episode i look at it as a little mini movie you know yeah. um yeah and if i didn't like the episode then that part of the movie isn't yeah you know up to whatever my criteria is yeah. um so i kind of approach them the same way i don't think too much about that okay. it's more like in a uh series you just have just have more canvas yeah. more of an arc more sort of time to play with the character more can yeah, yeah more canvas to yeah. paint on you know yeah. um doesn't mean you can't make as beautiful a painting in a smaller canvas yeah. it just needs to have a different amount of depth perhaps yeah. you know in each as per each square inch of the canvas yeah. that's all bigger you don't have to put everything here in the center you can spread it out a bit that's all i think that's a very nice way of looking at it um I, i'm also curious to know about sort of the the other factors you know unfortunately it's not just the material you have to consider there are packaging and all kinds of other aspects of it so do i think part of the slow death of my soul is considering <laughs> all of these things because it's true i do consider them now yeah. you get locked into the system you start to think like that yeah. it's not something i thought about it at at, at all yeah. at all who are the other actors who is the producer who is this i love this role let yeah. me do it that's yeah. how i started so that is one of the things i really want to talk to you about uh, if if you're okay to talk about it but like just on this context for example when you get an offer like that how much does the platform matter for example it's a show you know the material is interesting to you is, is that something you're considering or is it is that because you've worked on if i'm not wrong you have worked on most platforms um is that something that enters your mind at all well i did wonder if rocket boys was more easily available in other countries yeah. what would that mean yeah uh There's something to think about. Yeah. Do I take it back? Do I not like or that I, I was involved in my anything against Sony Live? No, no, fucking yeah. incredible. Yeah. Like, superb. So glad I did it. Absolutely happy to work with Sony Live again. Yeah. But you think okay, there's all this money, time, effort poured into something. I wish it had easy global reach. Yeah. In case there is people yeah. wanted to yeah. watch it, you know? I think about that often, you know, what if that show which was very interesting was actually on that platform? You can't help because it could have a very different sort of trajectory or whatever word you want to use. But just coming, I mean, as I said, you know, a lot of that stuff is out of your control, you know, how something is marketed, etc. In terms of what is, I'm curious to know with series specifically. Does it ever enter your sort of calculation or assessment of a project 
But do you ever think if this goes on to be very very popular, mm. I might well have to do three to four seasons of it? You know, I might actually be attaching myself to something that has legs. Is that something that you consider? Is that something that excites you? Or yeah, great. If yeah. it does well, super. Yeah. If it's something I love, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it could be something that you're actually saying that I might be making a much larger commitment. Um, I really don't think too much about the future. Okay. Uh, so if I'm interested in the role at present moment, interested yeah. in the role. Hopefully, you know, if it all goes well and everyone is happy, we do season two as well. Great. Yeah, I love uh, waiting for my favorite show's second season yeah. or third season or fourth season. So, yeah. that makes sense. I, I think we, we don't get locked in in the same way here as people do in other places. Like, I know that if I'm auditioning or if I've been called, like recently I got cast in something where they needed me to fly out within a week and then stay until September. Okay. And it's exclusive. That's yeah. part of the deal. Yeah. Um, which I couldn't do because there were other things. Things over here that I couldn't let. But over here, there is flexibility. Okay. There's a lot more flexibility. You don't have to be locked into exclusively made in heaven for its entire period. You can bounce around and people cool. understand with dates and they make allowances for you. So, yeah. uh, so no, there's no fear in terms of that. Okay. That, you know, is this going to you know, take away something else I want to do. No. I mean, again, good problems to have, right? Yes, absolutely. It just means that uh, work's coming your way. People are responding to it very well. Uh, and just speaking of the present moment, you know, coming back to sort of the conversation I had with Sudeep, there is obviously all that talk right now about how things have slowed down. You know, you have all these platforms who sort of took over such a large chunk of the entertainment industry, trying to figure it out, figure out this business model, things are not being commissioned. And for a lot of writers and filmmakers, they're really feeling that pinch and waiting for the dust to settle and things to go back to business as usual. I'm curious to know, is any of that being felt by you and actors at all, or is that not? Every second actor you talk to is like, I'm not even going to ask about work because it's dry. Oh, okay. Um, I'm okay. I'm doing okay yeah. this year. Yeah. But I don't talk about it too much because other people are feeling the pinch. Yeah. And I think there's a pinch all the way up. Yeah, absolutely. I think almost anyone you talk to from uh, an actor that would be my peer versus an actor that is a couple steps behind in the progress of their career or an actor that's many steps ahead in the yeah. progress of their career. Everyone is feeling the pinch. Yeah. And that's just the actors. You talk to writers, no show is being made. You yeah. talk to producers, they're like, we are fucked. We are fucked. It's like, all right, all right, okay, okay, okay. I'm I not asking ask. you for a role. I'm not asking you for a role. <laughs> <sighs> Do you have one though? Um, you know, so, so, so It is an uncertain time, I guess. Is I think it's an uncertain time. I'm not entirely sure why. There are rumors. Yeah. There are buzzy little bits yeah. floating around, but I don't know. I can't say for sure. Yeah. So it seems like this is one of those years people will have to ride out. Yeah. There was COVID. Yeah. Then there was a boom where everyone wanted to finish everything. Yeah. Any money that was waiting, pour it in, get the work done, finish what's left over, finish what was supposed to happen, poured, 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 poured in, did not get the results they anticipated. Yeah. And I think there's that slump. Yeah. Correction, whatever word. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. 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 However... Beautiful things happening. Manjumal Boys doing very well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Avisham yeah. doing very well. Yeah. Lapata Ladies doing yeah. very well. Yeah. Maybe it's time to make fun family films. Yeah. Maybe it's time to care about your script and tell the story you want to tell and see what happens. Roll the dice. Yeah. Maybe make good movies. You know, let's try that. Um, and and I, I guess the other part of this whole sort of weird, you know, pinch, as you put it, which I guess everyone's trying to process and understand, is I'm very protective of storytelling on streaming. I've always said that over the last few years, the finest Hindi language storytelling, the finest sort of performance has all been in shows. And, you know, so much fine work of yours has been on, on shows. Um, I'm just, are you concerned at all about where the industry is moving? Because there's all this, again, all these buzzwords and you hear things like TV plus and, you know, it's trying to just appeal to that TV audience. The sensibilities are shifting. Uh, there are going to be fewer platforms, which means maybe fewer things are going to get commissioned. Just the volume of interesting storytelling could come down in terms of whenever things settle. Does that mm. worry you at all? No. Film was going to completely uh, demolish theater. Uh, 
silver, whatever, tapes were going to completely demolish uh, regular television. Yeah. DVDs were going to completely demolish this. Blu-ray was going to completely demolish that. Streaming now is going to completely... Everything is... Yeah. It's always in a flux. Good work will always continue. There'll be some platform that wants it. Yeah. There'll be some avenue to do it. I think... Um, going back to what we were talking about earlier, I think I need to... Uh, go back to an earlier part of my life where why I wanted to do a project is because I was interested in engaging with ideas. Yeah. Many ideas about the part, all the, part, all the ideas that you could have about a part. And I think now I engage with all these other things a little bit more than with ideas. Of course, I get excited once the script is in front of me, but... Mm. The other part of your brain kicks in. Yeah, and I think that part of your brain only leads to all these feelings of strange dissociation and aloofness and upset and confusion, yeah. actually. Is it fair to say, do you feel like you lose touch with the artist and what he responds to? Maybe. Mm. I think that still gets awakened once you're you know, on your feet, once you're rehearsing the scene. It'll, it'll pop back up. Yeah. The thing is, I just didn't spend any of that previous time on all of that other thought. Yeah. So I only got the fun of it. Now I get all that irritating thought and then the fun of it and then a little bit more irritating for thought and then the fun of it again, you know. Yeah. Um, and you just wish you were free to just enjoy the thing. Just go back to ideas. Yeah. What will this show bring me? Who gives a crap? Yeah. Do you like the part? Do yeah. the part. Yeah. Do the part. I mean, that sounds wonderful in an <laughs> ideal world. <laughs> Um, I also want to get your perspective as an audience. You know, you said something in an interview last year, you were talking about streaming and you said that, you know, you feel that streaming is, bra is sort of tapped into the TV audience. It's really catering to that more than the theatrical audience. So as just an audience member, do you not feel that... Did I say that? Did I say that? <laughs> you, you did. <laughs> I can show you the clip. Okay, okay. Uh, but no, so I'm just curious, you know, do you not feel like the streaming, sort of the way it's conditioned audiences to look away from movie theaters in, in, in a sort of seismic way? Uh, like, do you not feel like people go to theaters less now? I don't think it has anything to do with theaters. Okay. I think it has to do with like, it's the same as the Instagram algor algorithm, right? Okay. It's designed to keep you on Instagram. Okay. Netflix shows are designed to keep you on Netflix. And they do a very good job. So when you live, whatever it is, yeah. you know, I think it's more that. Yeah. I don't think the competition is cinema halls. Yeah. I think the competition is your phone. Okay or like other forms of advertising yeah. or other forms of revenue, whatever that may be. Yeah. So maybe I said the thing about the streaming. I don't think necessarily streaming caters to the TV audience, but I think that's what it is becoming. Got it. Y yeah. yeah. I guess my question was more like, you don't feel like people will be like, love that ladies, heard great things about it. I'll wait for it to come. You know, like why should I go to the movie theater for it? Uh, which is sad, but like, do you feel like that mindset is coming into people? Um, my favorite joke every time I go to a sort of a big mainstream Hindi film is the first thing you see on screen. It's not the title, it's not the production company, it's streaming partner, Amazon. You know, it's a movie literally saying to you All on right. Netflix, saying that, right. are you sure you want to be here? You know, like in a couple of weeks, it's going to come at home. Like, it's right. the first thing you see on screen. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. See, I don't go to movie cinemas as much anymore because sometimes I'm just not in the mood to get dressed up and take pictures and la di la di la. Yeah. So for me, it's more that. It doesn't really necessarily have to do with this, this, this streaming thing. I still go to the movie theater yeah. quite often. I still love it. Yeah. I don't think you can ever kill it. Yeah. Sitting in a dark room, a bunch of strangers, feeling similar things. You're also now doing a, a Telugu film and I have to ask you about yeah. that. It's, you know, it's very exciting, just the idea of you sort of crossing into a, a, a different industry. I'm just very curious to know what made you sort of want to do it. What's, that experience has been like and is it is any a part is that a part of the calculation you mentioned in your head that you know theatrically it's the films from the south that are really the most exciting you know right uh, is was that part of the calculation at all no no okay. no i liked uh, uh speaking to shekhar kamula yeah. and uh they paid me a lot of money yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that, uh, i i don't otherwise i didn't otherwise want to do yeah. villain too much okay. again just because of what happens you Got know it. Um, not that I'm opposed, that's the thing. It's not that I'm opposed to villains. I'm just opposed to boring one dimensional yeah. vi villains. Be evil because you're evil. Yeah. You know, or, or not very well written villains or villains that are just a prop. 
you know, that provoke yeah. the hero to say the heroic phrase. Yeah. It's, well, it's like, not a three-dimensional character. It's like, why would I say that at this point? Am I stupid? You know, <laughs> and then the person is like, no, no, see it. But then they say this, they have this smart response to that. It's like, yeah, I know. Okay, I'll say it. So it's not a character by itself. You live in service of, you know, uh, provoking the one-liner. Yeah, I find often that's the case with, with anyway, with n not so well-written scripts, supporting actors, villains particularly, it doesn't seem like they're coming from a full three-dimensional world of their own and consequently they're saying something and the writer is managing to make that point anyway. Yeah. It feels more like you speak so the writer can make their point through the hero, you know, uh, which I think is a real tragedy because people aren't dumb. Yeah. They get it. They know it. They feel it in their heart, you know, whether no matter what you want to say, they're like, yeah, yeah, that was good, but I liked what he said, you know, but that can't be the whole movie, right? Yeah. That's not enough anymore. Yeah. So, oh, but the Telugu film, but I have really enjoyed learning the lines. There's a great cast. I mean, this is uh, the one with Dhanush and is that? Yeah, Dhanush, yeah. Um, Nagarjuna sir, Rashmika Mandana and me, really. Yeah. Um, and you're the big bad guy. I'm the bad guy, I'm the bad guy, bad guy. Yeah, yeah. So I've enjoyed it. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I really like Shekhar, sir. Uh, Nagarjuna has been really, really lovely to me on set. Um, I think I have more scenes with him. I don't have much with uh, Dhanush, Dhanush, actually. Yeah. Um, and Rashmika, not a single, yeah. not a single one. So, yeah, it's been good. He sounds like a very cool, unlikely adventure. Yeah, yeah. And he's he the director. He's very. Interesting. We have a nice wordless kind of communication. Um, his English is good, but you know, he wants to express himself in Telugu immediately and then he has to realize and then he's mid translating. So sometimes it's a lot of just like, when, you know, and I'll be like, yeah, okay. The you. Connection. You know? Yeah, I yeah, got you. And he'll be like, okay, cool. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah, sweet, really tall. Very thin-shouldered. I like him a lot. Yeah. No, like I said, it, it just sounds very, very interesting. Uh, and we look forward to watching it, obviously. I've been like, please, yeah. next one, not a villain. <laughs> please, I don't want to do, I don't want to keep doing these things, you know? Like, or if it's a villain, be a person also. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 this guy's a person also. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah, see, we'll it. see. <laughs> um, I want to come back to what you were saying about sort of the artist, if I can phrase it like this, sort of trying to navigate the packaging and perception and all that. But does it ever affect your choices? Because you, you're someone who clearly, like you said, you like to do things that excite you. One day it's a short film, one day it could be sort of theater. You, you know, you want to do the things that really excite you. But then there is also that logic of, again, I don't know how it's to phrase the perception packaging that says only do this role, you know, do this, this kind of thing. Actually, you kind of get beaten into this idea of, oh, no, no, you have to be more selective. Yeah. You know, you have to like, you know, not do these things. Because it happens. Yeah. The, 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 the thing that you thought would never happen does happen. Yeah. After Nirja, I thought people will hear me talk though in interviews and will be like, oh, he's nothing like that. Yeah. Obviously, he can do all kinds of things. That didn't happen at all. They wouldn't put you in a box. Didn't happen at all. No. And then you wonder, you know, you wonder well, how much is media? How much is actually that? How much is what, you know? Yeah. Uh, Talent agencies want to put out things like, you know, the next gubber, you know, whatever. And it's like, yeah, but you're, you've already put me in a, you've already started, yeah. you know? And then the media will ask it over and over again until it's a point of like, yo, you're doing it. You realize you guys are doing it. Yeah. Is it upsetting to be typecast? It's like the fact that you make that the headline every single time is what's doing it. Yeah. I don't think it would have happened without that. And then you have to spend years trying to undo that image. by doing You have work. to then you have to say, oh, no, I'm not doing any villains, yeah. you know, not necessarily because that's what you feel in your heart or anything, but just because you have to take that stance just so people will stop annoying the fuck out of you, yeah. you know? No, I was also going to ask what's when it comes to this conflict and whether it's managers, whether it's, you know, all the voices in your ears, even if you're not asking for it. What's the worst piece of advice you've ever been given on the things you should do 
to position yourself a certain way, the roles you should take, things like that. Oh, I mean, it's, <laughs> con- it's constant, you know. Like as soon as you try to hire PR, they start saying, when are we doing the airport sighting or whatever, you know. It's, it's just like not, I just could not care less. <laughs> but when someone says, when can we do the airports, are you actually taking a flight or do you just... <laughs> no, no, you're taking a you flight. You have to take a flight. Yeah, okay, just taking, just you're checking. taking a flight. Yeah, you yeah. just tip them off that you're going there, you know. And then you get all ready and you look good and you're like, oh, oh, oh and you hug somebody <laughs> that you, you know, whatever. Whatever, man. <laughs> these are, these are, this is the game. Yeah. It's unavoidable. There's very clever people behind these things. They know what's up. They, they know why it's important. They know the power of projecting an image. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I'm riding around Bandra on a bicycle in like shorts looking you know and i'll eventually see a mirror and be like see this is the image you're projecting yeah. a human being a human being yeah Which... maybe in somewhere else that would be appreciated over here the truth is it's not yeah. it's like this guy yeah. he's so available yeah. means he can't be talented yeah. means he can't be interesting can't be a star means he can't be a star yeah. that's fine I guess you just have to be happy with you, what you want to be, you know, and hope you can keep doing the work. Like you're saying, hope you can keep getting cast and things that you find interesting. And so far, slump or no slump, hurdles or no hurdles, it is happening. Absolutely. Speaking of the game, yeah, I also have to ask you about the whole social media chaos, necessary evil pain in the ass. No, <laughs> please no. Um, Every, you know, we're, oh no! There's been a lot of talk. He's, he's still going. <laughs> I'm going. I'm he's going. Gonna we're going to do this. We're going to get there. Get that. Uh, we've heard everything from actors getting replaced because they don't have a following, and you know, people getting cast based on their following and all that rubbish. If someone was an aspiring actor and they just had to ask you your advice on how do I navigate social media um, to either sort of help my profession or you know the things I'm willing to do, not willing to do, and that just whole headache. What advice would you have? There's some people that just love it. Yeah. There's some people that just love it and are good at it and fucking power to you, yeah. you know? I've not been a photograph guy for most of my life. It's not something I, other people take photos. That's fantastic. I love it. I can look at your photo and remember the memory together. That's fantastic. It's just not been my thing. Um, I have to push myself to do it. I have to kind of force myself to do it a bit. Uh, you force yourself to do it for enough time, you start doing it. You start kind of really doing it as well to a certain extent. I think it may matter more for money, making money, yeah. than it does necessarily for getting roles. But I'd heard a lot about how people don't get cast because they don't have a social media following. Yeah. So I know I forced myself for a while. Now I'm in a kind of like, I've been at some whatever number of followers for quite a while. And I just, you know. Um, also, I get so many messages in that deleted folder of people saying very, very nice things. Yeah. They don't, none of them follow me. <laughs> you are my favorite actor of all time. And then I'll click on the thing, click on the whatever their face and it'll be like, there's, they don't even follow me. That's how you increase your how following. How can I be their favorite actor of all time? Or maybe my Instagram <laughs> content is so shit that they're like, we like to watch you in movies, but if we follow you, we'll stop liking you. That could be the case. Or I don't we know. love you, but we don't want people to know we love you. <laughs> maybe. I don't, I don't know. But so, so, Or like message, you know, and I'll be like, this is why... This is why I'm not cast in the blockbuster <laughs> because all these fuckers don't follow me. Um, I spoke to Vamika Gabi last year and she had a very interesting, sort of more positive uh, take on this whole social media game. She literally said, you know, she, she dives. Mine is positive. If you love it, that's good for you. <laughs> yeah. I love that you love it. Yeah. No, but hers was interesting. Hers was basically, she's like, I do all the social media things. And she said, my logic is by getting to a certain level, you make, there's a lot of money to be made there. Yeah. And it puts less pressure on me having to take crap roles. Right. You know? I, I don't have that financial pressure. I can go after things that... But then you're me. like an advertiser. Yeah. You're like an advertiser. Absolutely. So at the end of the day, the question is, do you want to be an advertiser? Yeah. Or would you rather do roles that may not be as interesting, but they improve because a good actor is engaging with the material yeah. and the ideas? Yeah. Depends on what you want from life. Yeah. So I don't know which one is better or worse, even in terms of what Vamika said. I get it. Yeah. Having financial security is fantastic. Yeah. 
I recommend it to anyone who can get it. Um, some people will obviously have a quicker start than others, but if it's within your power, yeah. take it. Uh, because yeah, it's nice to be able to walk away from things that you don't want to yeah. do um, and not feel the pinch. Yes, I'm very happy for my social media uh, f followers to grow. Yeah. Um, I think I'll have to give them more than what I currently give them yeah. because I think they're looking at it at the moment will be like, yeah, okay, so there's one like some picture of you and then like three ads and then a picture of you and then three ads. Yeah. That's not really why we're here. Yeah. And I think they're clever as well. They know yeah. it just when you've become an ad account. It might sound naive. It just sucks that, you know, artists and actors and people who really care about doing stuff have to worry about stuff like that if i could make yeah. enough money yeah. on purely uh the rest yeah yeah hell no deactivate tomorrow um i also wanted to get your take on i was just trying to think of the other big sort of shifts in the life of an actor over the like sort of last few years and the other big one you mentioned just now is you know the whole talent management pipeline that whole ecosystem i feel like that's still relatively new where only sort of it's been maybe 10 years or whatever it is do you think and now there are multiple agencies who sort of represent actors and talent things like that do you think that's been universally positive? Is it a great time to be an actor? Because you get that representation, whether it's for negotiations, getting work, etc., uh, or is it a mixed bag? What is a talent manager? What do you think it should be? What do you think a management team, let's say you were my manager. Yeah. Of course, I'd be like, hey, listen, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, you know. I also want to hit these monthly um, finance targets, you know. And I also want, you know, I want one commercial film. I'd like one, like, you know, like for me film. And then I'd like one uh, lead in a um, big series on one of the premium platforms. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of this stuff I'll, of course, mm -hmm. tell you. But, like, what, what do you think it should be? Of course, you'll negotiate the contract. Mm. Of course, you'll be my shield in those scenarios. But what's the like main thing? So personally, yeah. I would love if it was like, this is, this is not a one year plan, two year plan, three year plan, four mm. year plan. Yeah. This is like a five to 10 year plan, mm. all right? These are targets. This is where what we're moving towards together let's carve out the steps okay now of course some of that will be reacting to what we receive but in general this is our goal i think most talent management agencies for anyone below that like whatever top top rung is is entirely reactive so then you have to bring things to the table, which they react to, or they just react to whatever offers come, you know? I think it's a, there's nothing wrong with striking when the iron is hot, but I think that becomes the only way of operating. So if this iron is hot, we strike whatever we can get which could dilute, dampen, possibly make the person suffer. Like there are some actors you see, they have a big breakthrough movie, even though they've been around for a while. And then they start doing, you'll see like six things where they're the same, they're the same. It encourages typecasting. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh God, this is boring now, you know? And it's not their fault. Yeah. Not only does the system push you to do those things, but directors will literally sit across you and be like, Vojo made in heaven me kya tha na? It's like, no, I don't know. No, I just did that. I did that. It's called made in heaven. I, you should watch I it. just did it. Yeah. yeah. And also I think with people new to the industry who haven't kind of been born into it or haven't like been around it for a long time, you gotta 
be their guides. You got to help them. You got to talk to them. You got to explain to them how things work and how it is so relationship based and how there are hurt egos and those need to be managed and those need to be, you know, discussed cleverly. I think not only do the people who are from the families have the advantage of the family support but more than that Exposure. they have the advantage of being guided in terms of how to handle situations you're new in the industry you expect certain things based on what you've experienced up until that time or what you consider good or what you think is right in the moment maybe completely wrong someone needs to nicely carefully yeah. clearly explain it to you um so i think yeah, I think these are the basically the two problems. One is this like over reactivity where it's just like after a while it becomes like yeah, but what do you, where do you see me? Yeah. You know? For, forget for, th throw all the offers out. What what do you think that I should be doing? What do you think that I deserve? Yeah. Let's start there, all right? So that's one. And then the second thing is this like over managing, you know? managing in a way that isn't communication okay. it's manipulation okay light yeah for your benefit you know yeah but like no just talk to me man just explain to me why this decision was made and i may or may not understand yeah. but i'll understand I, i'll know why you did it at least I'll talk to me like a person talk to me like a person yeah. <laughs> what's the role you're tired of getting offered Role? Yeah. What's the kind of? Is there a kind of role you're just tired of getting off? Uh, rich bad guy. Rich bad guy. Yeah. He's never poor. It's always the rich bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's the. It's the curse of my bad Hindi, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. If my Hindi was better, maybe. Yeah, and you get a middle class bad guy. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Um, if I was a fly on the wall uh, and I was sort of watching you prepare a week before a shoot or a new mm -hmm. project, mm -hmm. what would I see you doing? Uh, running the lines, running yeah. the lines, running the lines, running the lines, running the lines, running the lines. Yeah. Running the lines. So become like second nature. Just trying to run it a lot, you know, and trying to play with them and have fun with them and just rehearse it. So you should grasp one word and then the next word should just tumble out, you know? Yeah. Um, that's the only hope you have in something as strict as Shakespeare or in a language you're not as comfortable with yeah. to seem good yeah. <laughs> or yeah. seem real or seem believable or yeah. seem suspenseful or seem whatever is required from you by, uh, by the director like more than a person who's just trying to remember the lines yeah, yeah. you can see it yeah <laughs> you can see it yeah. you leave I can, a lot of work. i can see it in their eyes yeah, you know yeah. you don't know what you're saying <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it leaves a lot of work for the editor to try and salvage yeah um when people or fans come up to you in public what are they recognizing you for uh, all kinds of things, Padmavat, the Rocket Boys, uh, Nirja, some people still, Sanju. Uh, Can you tell? Like, that's a Sanju guy, that's a Nirja guy. That's a no, 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 not necessarily, yeah. not necessarily. Um, yeah, almost nobody has been like, we loved you in Jonaki, you know, <laughs> yeah. that would be nice. <laughs> uh, niche films, niche audiences. Um, if there's one thing you wish you knew about navigating the industry as an actor, uh, what would it be? If you could go back in time and tell yourself one thing about... Um, people might treat you like shit. Don't get angry. Okay. Don't get angry. I was young. I was pretty hot-headed. Mm -hmm. I got angry. Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand how people could be like this. I just couldn't understand it. Yeah. I came from some amount of working in the States and then from a more we're all equal theater kind of space. Yeah. We're human beings. I just couldn't. I just could not believe it. Yeah. Yeah. And it made me very angry, you know, angry and upset and hurt and disappointed. And yeah, luckily I have a good equilibrium. I come back to equilibrium quite quickly. Yeah. You know, it's like and it's out and then it's done, yeah. you know, now it's done. You know? um, but no, I would definitely lie more, I guess. I would lie more. <laughs> That's unfortunate, but I'm sure I could. No, in a nice way, yeah. in a nice way. Yeah. I just lie more. I just 
not say what I actually felt. I felt there was some kind of honor in telling the truth. And even if that truth looked angry, you know, and no one gives a shit. Yeah. No one cares about your truth. And they just don't want to be talked to a certain way, you know. I think now I'm progressing to a point where I want to still be able to say what I want to say in an in a kind of way, but if I had to just go back, I'd be like, listen, you weren't able to say what you wanted to say in a kind of way back then? Lie. Yeah. Just lie. <laughs> Forget it. It's easier. You know, go into the room, scream into a pillow, come outside and be like, I love that you somehow can't afford a car to take us back home, even though you're paying us nothing at all. And the main actor drove up like this. I love that. <laughs> you're the best. I'm going to take the train. You know? Yeah. Uh, again, that sounds like accurate, but very unfortunate uh, advice. Uh, but that is the way of the world. Lie. <laughs> lie a lot. <laughs> and just tell, like, tell your close friends the like, the, your pain. No one else cares. They don't care. They don't care. Don't want to hear it. Laugh. Lie. That is my headline. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just lastly. Uh, my mom. Oh, no. My mom hates when I tell this. My mom hates when I tell this anecdote. She's always <laughs> like, you lie. should learn how to lie better and all <laughs> that other stuff. And and then it appeared and I said it in some other interview as well. And then it was like the last line and all of her <laughs> friends were forwarding the interview being like, oh, you taught your son to lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, lastly, if there's one thing you could change about the streaming space in terms of how it functions today, what would it be? I w wouldn't even know where to start. It could be from the perspective of an actor, the material, whatever you feel like from your experience of it, anything you'd change. I was going to say trust, trust in your power of storytelling, but you know, maybe you have it, maybe you don't. So who knows? Um, but trust that you can tell the story you believe in. Trust that you can do it. And that if you do it, people will get it. Rather than that whole dilute, how do I make it safer? How do I make it more palatable? That whole exercise? I think usually either there's pressures that I cannot understand coming from somewhere situations that I can't understand. But I think usually the concern is more like I'm worried I won't be able to make it clear in the way that I had imagined that I could. Yeah. And so people won't get it. As opposed to, no, I have the skill and it will be clear yeah. and people will get it. Back yourself. I don't think it's that hard. <laughs> you think it's Or <laughs> it's just that you don't have the skill to be clear about what you're trying to say. That's why you're underlining it six times in the writing, you know, in one speech. Yeah. But no, thank you so much for doing this and being here. I really can't think of many actors who are jumping from short films to series to King Lear to Telugu films and beyond. I think it's it's just, it must be very exciting. And I really hope that the industry and yourself, you know, allows you to do that and keep doing that and just keep the artist alive. I think it will. But thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you guys got as much out of that conversation as I did. You can catch the entire first season of the Streaming Show podcast on Spotify and on all major podcast platforms. Before we go, a quick word on Mubi. Mubi is a curated one-stop shop streaming service dedicated to great cinema from around the globe. You can try Mubi for free for 30 days at mubi.com slash the streaming show. This week, I recommend you check out Made in England, the films of Powell and Pressburger. Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger were a legendary British filmmaking duo who made their mark over decades between the 1940s and 1960s. To put their artistry into perspective, six of their films made it into the Sight & Sound magazine's list of the greatest films of all time poll. David Hinton's documentary examines the dynamic duo's artistry, filmography, impact and enduring influence on modern cinema. Passionately presented, produced and narrated by the legend himself, Martin Scorsese, the immensely enjoyable documentary sees Scorsese lead us on a deeply personal journey of Powell and Pressburger's filmography and how it influenced his own work like Raging Bull and The Age of Innocence. Made in England seeks to celebrate and examine the work of two misunderstood artists termed as experimental filmmakers working within the studio system and how much of their work serves as the foundation of the genres and storytelling styles that we live for in the modern age. You can watch the film on Mubi.